Let's take it across to Pankaj and highlight what's going on though within the mid-cap universe. Pankaj, after a strong recovery that's play out, played out already in the mid and small caps, tell us what's really standing out within uh, these pockets. Right, Aisha, this is the part of the mid-cap magnifier that we have been getting for our viewers. And today what we are doing is that what's happening as far as the large cap space is concerned versus the mid-cap space. So the large cap space has been outperforming and this is the first outperformance since 2013. Since then, mid-caps have been doing very well. Auto consumer, I've looked at the BSE 500, uh, Nifty and BSE 500 names. They've given a 18% CAGR in the last five years. I'm only talking about the names that are a part of the mid-cap index, not including the large cap names into this. Utility consumption are among the worst performers in the last five years. So these are some of some of the sectors that essentially have not done well. Overall, BSE 500 as a sector, as an as a index is up two times in the last five years. Now let's just look at, you know, what were the PE multiples? So going into 2012, the one year forward PE multiple for small cap index was nine times, for the mid cap index was 11 times. That in 2017 with the double uh, move that we are talking made the made the index at about 21 times for the small cap, 20 times for the mid cap space. And now in 2018, after the correction, it's at 16 times in terms of earnings for the small cap space and for the mid cap space, it's about 18 times. So this is the correction that you've seen of the PE multiple that was there uh, in 2017. But that's not all, you know. Uh, you can just look at the change, the weighted change that has happened for the sector. So financials, it used to be 21%, now it's 26%. Consumer used to be 13%, it's now close to 16%. Auto as a sector has increased its weightage by 2% into the index. So there are some meaningful changes as far as these indices are concerned. Oil and gas on the other hand has seen a 200 basis points decline. Metals as a sector has seen a uh, 400 basis point decline. When you look at the metals pack, you would be wondering that Vedanta, Hindalco, all of them have done so well in the last two or three years. But you know, these are some of the mid cap names, you know, where uh, essentially, you know, things have really not worked out in their favor and that's why the metal index weightage has gone down significantly. Now, if you look at some of the stocks, there are still a lot of stocks that are above the 50 level, 50 P mark, which generally, you know, is, is, a, is, a, is a barometer. So India Bulls Ventures, 89 P, Avenue Supermart, 84, you cannot call it a mid cap name because it's close to 1 lakh crores. So Bharti Airtel is at 79 times. So there are a whole host of stocks that are there still about the 50 uh, name. And you know, I'm not including the lights of Page Industry, Aishar, which have traditionally been trading at those level. A Hudson Agro is at 77 times. The Indian Hotels is at 63 times. You have a Tata Communication, which is close to about 50 times. So you know, these are names which have got re-rated and the PE now or the new PE normal for them uh, is at these levels. Oh yeah, there is that part of the market which continues to be expensive, sitting at bloated valuations. But then there are others, what with the mid-cap fall already of 13% this year. And then by the way, almost a 5-7% to recovery as well coming in. And it's a long list of individual stocks which have bounced back meaningfully from their June lows as well. So let's chat about the market narrative. Ajay Srivas, the CEO at Dimensions Consulting, joins us in the show right now. Ajay, hi, morning. Good to have you on the show. We're rained in in Mumbai and it seems like it's been raining gains in D Street as well. Slowly, quietly, but we're getting there. How much would you read into this small and mid-cap recovery, Ajay, from the recent lows? Listen, God has given you good rain. God has given the mid-cap some lifeline and a breather in the last 24, 48 hours. So let's enjoy it because it was a ruthless rundown on the portfolios. And I think, uh, you know, the fact was that uh, they had run up. The fact was that it was due. The fact is still that the, word, the judgment is still not out as to what's going to happen to most of these stocks. And the reason I say so is, it's not about stocks. It's about the economy. It's about the economic policy. You know, when an economy and an economic policy work towards in favor of large players, which is bound to have consolidation, huge open up the borders for a foreign direct uh, investment, the local companies start to get an advantage thanks to the compliance burden which has been put uniformly on all the companies. The credit squeeze which is happening at this point of time with the nationalized banks, that doesn't make a good case. It makes a pretty grim case for most of small cap, mid cap. So it's not about the sector. It's the fact is that our economic policy dictates that the consolidation is going to keep happening, is going to accelerate. Lots of players are going to fall down. And the way I would think play it out is like in a good day yesterday, if your stock did not perform or in fact went down, I think you should jettison the stock. So it's not about selection alone, it's about elimination. If on good days, the mid cap did not perform yesterday, I think that stock is a doomed stock in my view. There may be exception, but follow a process of elimination also because rally doesn't mean everything goes up. Rally means few go up and we all feel excited. That's been the nature of the market all of this year, right? Even within Nifty. Uh 
given the fact that we're just shy of that all-time top, it's only those 15, 20 names which have led us higher. But anyway, Ajay, so you're saying that, you know, the price-wise damage may be already done, uh, but time-wise correction is still due to play out within mid and small caps, right? No, I don't think it's time-wise. I think it's going to be performance-based. I think lots of calls will be taken on this June result because if these June results for select companies do not come in conformity with what the expectations are, you will find a lot more jettisoning of the stock happening. Today, there were still people who haven't sold, said it's too low, now we hope to have a recovery. Now, but if the June result, quarter June result, comes and shows us that some of these companies are not participating in the economic revival, are not moving up the ladder, are having trouble, could have disclosure issues, could have any kind of issues with that, those stocks will not perform. So I, I think it's going to be a shakeout in the next 45 days alone. There'll be no time wise. I think it'll be 45 days shakeout or build up. I think two things will happen. So when we come to August 15th or 16th, the day all the results are ended, you will find a much shorter list of companies that you would like to be invested in, in the mid cap space and the rest on, I think I will be consigned to the boondocks for rest of the year. There'll be no time wise consolidation for them. There'll be simple sellout capitulation for 60% of the stocks which do not perform in this quarter. Independence Day of another kind, right? Uh, but Ajay, so what, what is your expectation then from earnings this time around? Where do you think could be the performers and what could underperform? I think banks will do well. Mm. I think no matter what happens, the private banks, the four top banks are going to do extremely well. So they will go as per expectation. When it's extremely well, I think they'll meet the expectation and the trajectory is clearly positive. So I think banks are fine. IT is fine. Pharma is fine. Large consumer space would be by and large be okay. I think a few uh, infrastructure stocks should be okay. Cement would possibly disappoint. I think it's already corrected quite as in some stocks, but it possibly can disappoint. Commodities, I think they will surprise us because I think the profitability will be extremely good. The share price has been brought down quite drastically. So I think that's one place in commodities where you could play. Steel could surprise to the upside because that's another place that could give you a good head start in terms of returns. So I think if you look at this sector, infrastructure will be very mediocre. Maybe a few road companies may still produce very good results, but infrastructure should be mediocre as a sector. And you know, then the assorted sector, auto ancillary should be extremely good because that sector is booming. If auto is booming, ancillary sector will boom. So their results will be spectacular. I don't think any issues with auto ancillary sector. So I think sectorally, these six or seven large constructs, which give a good weightage to index and the market, should do pretty okay and well in conformity with expectation in this quarter. And, uh, you know, the smaller cap, this infrastructure space, etc., I think they have a problem which will continue. I don't think there's a good revival happening there at this point of time. So consumer space, I think you'll find the retail companies should do okay, okay, not very great, but they should do okay, okay in terms of the consolidation plays. And I think that would sum up my views on the market, perhaps. So what you're saying is largely you're advising to stay with the performers. You're saying stay away from those turnaround hopeful stories that may see a turnaround. Stay with quality, even if it's coming at an expensive price. See, I'm a firm votary and have been in the camp called growth stocks. I, I have, uh, you know, value picks. I think, yeah, it can be a good hobby for you for 20% of portfolio, but that's not where they will make money in an environment. And the reason I say so is, it's, you know, you, got to, you can't fight the market. You can't fight what's happening globally. As you rightly said, even globally, look at the US market. It's consolidating towards the top. Europe, it's same thing is happening. So the point is, in India, our economic policies say the same thing will happen. So you can't fight economic fundamental factors, no much how you love the underdog at this point of time. Yeah, sure, and England may win a World Cup once in a while as an underdog, but it doesn't happen every day. But the point still remains that our, we have to tune ourselves to the economic policy, which says that the government spending in this year particularly is going to go towards sectors which give them maximum benefit to rural population, which will translate into maybe more tractor sales, maybe more consumer sales. But that's not the benefit going to come to the small caps. Nationalized banks collapsing doesn't benefit the small and the mid cap because they took credit from them. So why fight it? The value picks come from spaces which were in trouble and trouble cases are going to get into deeper trouble as the bank credit problem accelerates and exacerbates in this time. So why do it when growth stocks with lower risk are giving you so much of more returns and a safe return? So I would still say strategy is simple, stay with growth, 
forget value for the time being let someone else go pick value when value stock reaches a growth stage jump on the bandwagon and i'll give you an example for instance you look at electrode industry that share heg possibly could have slumbered along for 10 12 15 years with nothing in the last two years the moment became a growth stock is given you a return of five times so wait for a value pick to assume growth status and then jump onto the bandwagon because this value pick has hurt all of us i'm not saying i was a genius and i saw it before we also got hurt very badly on some of our portfolio choices and conclusion was value picks don't pay wait till they become momentum and growth picks then walk in you will get 60% of the return but in a much shorter time frame and much better off with less risk absolutely is value though emerging or it's already on the table uh, when it comes to pharma aj and again you know within pharma as well would you stick by with the sun pharma zoros which are getting those eirs and vais what have you for their critical facilities you know they've had the merit and they've proven in the past as well though a lean patch and lean patch has lasted almost about 2 years or would you be a little more spread across pharmaceuticals because the dark clouds have really lifted from the entire sector you can see that on the stock performances you know first thing is stocks are very cheap I think that's the bottom line. All pharma stocks are very cheap compared to what they were earlier at, and what people would buy today. If any of these companies would sell off to a PE uh, a PE player today, believe me, they would sell at two times of the share price they are at today at the lowest level. That's one. Number two is I don't know if you have a conversation with your channel or something. Six to eight months back, we moved a lot of our portfolio investment in pharma to MNCs pharma. I think they would proportionally do lot better than Indian pharma. Indian pharma will do fine because they have a good growth story for India. And the reason I keep repeating myself is the fact that the price control that you've been able to put on these MNC pharma companies for the first time may not be as easy to put given gentleman called Donald J Trump sitting in America. He is not long going to let his pharma companies be slumbered with price controls if they bring in good quality patented drugs into any country. Forget India for a minute. So I think if you look at the trade wars, the first benefit or the worst trade war or benefit of trade war is going to go to MNC Pharma, which are today relatively maybe feeling safe. That price control in countries like India is not going to be so vehemently put there as the trade war goes on, and you could retaliatory have problems with America. So I think for the they are in a safe zone, and I believe that they will outperform in terms of stock market the Indian pharma companies relative valuation wise, relative to share price increase wise, and of course we all know they give good dividends, they frequently do buybacks, they might even delist at some point of time. So all the benefits apart. their business local business in india is going to do well with much lower threat of price control than perhaps it was maybe 2 years back oh yeah donald trump and his tweets they keep us all on our feet but uh, ajay you know aside of the large caps and the stories that you've already talked about where are you finding value emerge in this recent fall that we've seen in the mid and small caps is there any pocket or any stock where you've actually bought in the fall well i i think uh, if one would say that the only big addition in a stock was the mid cap it was the large buys i think as we discussed mnc pharma was the second large buys we had uh, we have uh, started nibbling into uh, some of the cinema stocks at this point of time because i think you know they have been doing reasonably well they have been flat and they should do pretty well in the next 2 to 3 years in spite of netflix and amazon coming through because again the play is consolidation if you look at the top two players in the industry they control 90% of the multiplex industry for instance and it's going to get worse because they might become 100% of the market in a very short time so there is a consolidation play that we have bought into which is happening there and i think uh, if i were to what else uh, yeah and broadly again i said we are just buying more and more of what we have we have bought more consumer stock we bought more banking stocks we are just not deviating from the top 30 40 choices that we have in the portfolios and advising the customers to be the same and uh, stay with the front line at this point of time and uh, you know few odd choices in the small caps some defense stocks we have bought but that's all about it nothing very great buying in the small and the mid caps Okay, we'll wind it up the discussion on the markets. Rooting for England, are we for uh, the World Cup, Ajay? France, France, France. France, I bet France is the way to go. I think they are the winners. <laughs>
Okay, because you mentioned uh, England, so I thought you're betting on England. Okay, we'll see who wins. May the best team do. Uh, but good chatting England with you, England are the Ajay. underdog. England are the mid-cap stock, which will not perform. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is that the curse on England? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm supporting England, so I hope they win. And I'm betting slightly <laughs> bye on bye. Croatia as well. But okay, Ajay. Right. Good chatting with you All as always.